Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Definition, and this video, we're breaking down the new horror movie, Relic. The 2020 film has a lot to unpack from it, and throughout this video, we'll be going over our interpretation of the film and the true meaning of its ending. Obviously, there will be heavy spoilers here, so if you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, then I highly recommend that you turn off now. If you enjoy the video, then please drop a thumbs up, as it massively helps us out, and if you're still not subscribed to the channel, then make sure you do, as we drop videos like this every day. With that out of the way, thank you for clicking this, now let's get into our breakdown of Relic. Okay, so Relic predominantly follows three women from the same family. They are Edna, an elderly widow in her winter years, Kay, her daughter, and Kay's daughter, Sam. The movie is very much about lineage, inheritance, and how we must care for the ones closest to us, as we are probably fated to follow in similar footsteps to them as we grow older. Though the movie apes hereditary in many ways, I found that film had a far more bleak ending than Relic, which, depending on your interpretation, is about acceptance and love. The movie opens with Kay and Sam arriving at Edna's house, after neighbours have noticed that she hasn't been on the property for a long time. Kay and Sam are sort of estranged from Edna, and they've pretty much abandoned her to go and live their lives, likely seeing her as an inconvenience rather than an actual person. They arrive to find her missing, and thus they call on the police to track her down. Edna randomly returns to the house one day, as if nothing has gone on, and on the surface, it seems like she's suffering from dementia. Now, in order to talk about Edna and my take on the ending, I have to talk about the house itself and what it represents. We see that it is very much in a state of disrepair, and symbolically, this also speaks to Edna's mental state, which we learn has started to deteriorate. There are scattered notes throughout the property that all contain certain messages, and these perhaps indicate her actual thought process and what goes on through her mind. I've sadly known a lot of people that have suffered from dementia, and it's clear that, rather than having complete thoughts, most of the time they act on instinct and a scattershot thought process that is represented here. Edna is clearly lost with no one to guide her, and she puts food out for a dog that died years ago, leaves the bath running, and is clearly in need of care. Kay makes up excuses such as having work, but deep down, I think she knows that she has neglected her mother. Now, though the movie sort of teases at the supernatural, I do think that there are real-world indicators as to what's going on. I will, however, be going through both possibilities, and you can decide what ending you interpret the film as having. Now, black mold is often used throughout the movie, and in real life, this can cause a lot of issues. If you've seen our Haunting of Hill House breakdown, you'll know that the mold in that could also be used to explain the supernatural occurrences, and I believe that it makes a firm case here. Black mold is extremely toxic, and over time it can infect your brain neurons and cause a wealth of changes. Living amongst black mold can cause dizziness, depression, breathlessness, hallucinations, and even death. It's said throughout the film that there may be a presence in the house, however, I believe that it can be attributed to a number of things. The boy with Down syndrome could have potentially been coming into the house and going into the walk-in cupboard. Though his parents told him not to, he still did hang around the property and may have re-entered when he thought Edna was gone. There's also the possibility that the banging on the wall is Edna herself, who got lost in the labyrinth-like area within the house, and due to the mold, this caused her to hallucinate and believe that the house was shifting, similar to what we see through the perspective of Sam. A giant clue that adds weight towards this happens when Kay and Edna hear something in the walls, and they look up to see a giant mold stain, which I believe highlights what is really going on. Edna was of course missing at this time, so it is definitely a possibility. There's also a large black mark that appears on Edna's chest, and later on Kay, suggesting that this is linked with the mold, family, and the grounds itself. At one point, Edna tries to eat photographs and bury albums in order to stop the house from eating her memories, which I think represents living in the property amongst the mold has caused her memory to deteriorate rapidly. Now, the presence is felt throughout the entire house because, in my opinion, the mold runs throughout the walls and ceilings, and thus it's impossible to escape whilst you're on the grounds. Trying to navigate it eventually leads to you trying to navigate through a labyrinth, which decays your mind and mental state. As mentioned earlier, this is showcased by Sam, who finds an almost maze-like structure within the walls, and she becomes lost. Now, whether you think it's something more sinister or not, the mold was clearly put in the film for a reason, and it appears in Kay's dreams when she recounts the history of the location. We see that her family members have lived on the grounds for generations, 
and it is possible that their madness was linked to the state of the property and the mould infestation that's likely been through Edna's house and the cabin that was incorporated into the home. Kay has dreams of an old man in the previous versions of the house and we learn that this was actually her great grandfather. He sadly died of what appeared to be dementia after being abandoned by his family and I think this very much influences the end and the choices that Kay and Sam make. Like most families, Kay wrestles with putting her mother in a home but compromises are made that sort of show that the children and grandchildren have changed things and are not going to repeat the mistakes of the past. Now the movie kind of takes a big turn when Kay sees Edna stabbing herself in the chest in the bath. The water in the bath overflows and knocks out the power which makes Kay try and find her mother in the darkness. She comes across her with her skin peeling off, revealing somewhat of a demon underneath it. Now you can take this as a possession of the character and that something has been living in the house and on the grounds, preying on the family for decades. Opposing that though, you could take this other form as the complete difference in personality that someone can gain through dementia. Exploring the first option, the movie does take a supernatural turn and it has Kay fear for her life as she's chased by this monster. Kay ends up running through the labyrinth until she finds Sam. Together they manage to knock a hole in the wall and thus gain a way back into the house. The demonic figure returns and Kay beats it with a pipe and she and Sam make their escape. However, Kay hears her mother calling her name and she recalls how her great grandfather was abandoned too and instead of leaving Edna, decides to return to her. She takes Edna up to her bedroom and peels off the rest of her skin, showing a rather pathetic creature beneath. She puts it on the bed and cuddles up with it and not long after is joined by Sam. We then see a black mark on Kay's back, similar to the one on Edna's chest and they huddle together with Kay likely being doomed to the same fate that her mother had. Now there are really two ways that you can take this and either the demon on the property has claimed another victim and will continue this process with Kay and Sam or there's something more subtle going on. I actually take the ending as somewhat of a metaphor on family duty that is disguised as something evil. Throughout the last few years, Kay has watched her mother's mental state deteriorate and she has tried to flee from it. Kay clearly didn't care about the character that much and even though she was her mother, she was happy to leave her. However, this ending shows me through Edna calling her name that she realises their family have all shared a similar fate in which they were abandoned and it's likely one that Kay herself will fall victim to if she allows herself and Sam to run away. The returning to this symbolic demon and caring for it instead of hating and detesting it shows that Kay is willing to look after her mother rather than to spend her life fleeing from her duty. She has accepted her responsibilities and though I believe that the mold made her and Sam manifest visions of something otherworldly, the simple truth of the ending is that Kay and Sam will not abandon Edna. It's somewhat of a positive message, especially as we have confirmation that the same things will likely happen to Kay. However, she has raised Sam differently and instead of allowing Sam to run away from everything, much like she did, she will have a brighter future filled with the love of a daughter. I think in the final shot, Sam sort of realises what's going to happen to Kay and decides to stay with her. So the movie is kind of a pick your poison over whether you see things as actually demonic or as things that are caused by the black mould. Personally, I lean more towards the latter, especially due to my experience with people that have dementia and though often at times it can feel like you're dealing with a completely different person to the one that you knew, this other form is not something to be hated and to run from. We must show kindness as it could also happen to us one day and thus I feel like Relic delivers a strong message in the closing scenes. Now before we get into the rest of the review, I just want to let you know we're giving away a free copy of the MCU Infinity Saga to one random subscriber. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts on the movie in the comment section below. The winner is going to be chosen at random on the 15th of July and this set will be shipped out from then to whoever gets the prize. So best of luck to everyone who takes part. Okay, so what did I think of the movie as a whole? Well, though this is going to be a slow burn for a lot of people, I think that in the end, the overall film and meaning behind it are worth the wait. There's a lot going on here and though the cast is rather small, they all make an impact. Horrors to me are at their best when they also deal with humanity and it was gripping to see this play out. I don't think it quite matches the stature of films like The Babadook and Hereditary, but as far as horrors go, I think this is better than most released this year and it will stay with you long after you watch it. 
Overall, Relic was great and it gets an 8 out of 10. Now obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the movie, so comment below and let me know. If you enjoyed this video, then please drop a thumbs up and make sure you check out our breakdown of this weekend's other big release, The Old God, which is going to be linked at the end. If you want to support the channel and get to see content early, then please consider clicking the join button below. You can also come chat to us on our Discord server or at Heavy Spoilers on Twitter. As always, thanks for making it till the end of the video. And you've been the best, I've been Definition, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.